I wanted to modify these popular pillbox type flashlights into a light source for my macro videos. They're inexpensive, they have two levels of brightness, and they seemed easy to hack. I have two basic varieties of these flashlights, so I decided to tear them apart and see how they worked. Let's start with the more contoured version. The case has three sections, and the main light array and buttons are on one board. Clicking the switch toggles between the main lights and the smaller secondary lights. The secondary lights are on a separate mini PCB. All of the LEDs are arranged in rows with parallel connections, and both boards share a common ground. Four screws hold the entire assembly together. Simple enough. Now, let's look at the older and more expensive version. It has brass inserts for the screws that attach the back cover. The center plate is also screwed to the front plate. Even the main board has screws securing it to the center plate. This is a much more solidly designed product. The main light board looks almost the same, but the secondary lights are soldered directly to the PCB in this design. The LEDs still use the parallel circuit pattern, but the solder is more substantial in this version. So two similar products with similar functions use very different design and manufacturing choices. I thought the more contoured version would be easier to hack, and I have several of them to play with. So I opened a second copy and was surprised to see that even these identical-looking products had very different internal configurations. This second version also had a main light array, but the big toggle button is separate, not on the PCB at all. This made the wiring different, and even though the resulting functionality was identical. The case components are almost identical, and many of the parts are interchangeable. However, the integrated PCB version uses two resistors after the button, one for each light circuit, while the freestanding button version uses a single resistor before the button. The version with a separate button, not on the PCB, is nice because you can easily scavenge the light boards and the buttons individually. But the integrated PC button uh, version is simpler to reuse. Which to use? I had noticed that the flashlights emit different light, uh, varying quantities and qualities. It's difficult to see in the video due to the strongly directional nature of the LEDs, but when I stop the camera down, you can see it a little better. There's a definite difference in both coverage and color between all three flashlights. Who knows what I'll find in the other copies of the flashlight. I also notice that the pool of light covers a very small area. It's harsh, yet too weak to be very useful at a distance. I'm not sure these flashlights are what I need for my video lighting after all. But I have some other ideas, so let's do those instead. I grabbed some of my scavenged LEDs and chose the 5 volt safe version. I decided to replace the four LEDs on the secondary board with diffused red color LEDs to create a night vision saving type of flashlight. I put the 5mm red LEDs in the original holder with the cathodes all on the same side to form a parallel circuit, then bent the leads down on one of the LEDs. I'm going to do a freeform or dead bug style circuit. Just solder the leads of each LED to the bent leads and you have a circuit. That's some ugly soldering, but reaching around lights and cameras while keeping my hands and shadows out of the frame is harder than I realized. It works though, and from the front you can't see the solder joints anyway, so it's all good. Now, solder the power and ground of the LEDs. Put the array back into the holder and into the slot in the case, and after testing them first, you have a working red light, night vision saving flashlight to use on your next adventures into the dark. It's dim enough to use up close, but bright enough to see the ground on a moonless night. I have a one LED version that I use for night photography, but a slightly brighter four LED version could be useful for finding dropped parts and seeing the ground better. So this turned out even better than I expected. Not bad for 10 minutes of work and some used LEDs. For the second version, I decided to do a UV black light. For this one, I'm using some cheap one-sided perf board. It has rings of copper around the holes on one side of the board. The other side has no copper at all. 
to use it, put the LED through the holes on the non-copper side with the leads showing through on the side with the copper. I arranged the four UV LEDs with all the anodes in a row and tried to fit the original cover back over them. It didn't fit perfectly, but it's close enough that I can fake it. I lightly scored the non-copper side of the perf board along a row of holes with a utility knife, then broke it along the score line, and also used a pair of clippers on the other score line just to show that there's two or more ways of cutting perf board. It was still too big, but I used the clippers to nip away the extra until it fit. I tack soldered the LED leads to the copper pads of the perf board. After that, it's almost the same process as the first version. Gosh, I've got to get better and stop rushing this soldering if I'm going to be videotaping it. Sorry about that. Connect to power and ground. Uh, remember to turn off the power first. Then test it for connections and fit. They both worked, so I put it all back together and I have an LED black light. Cheap craft store glow in the dark paint really pops. Fluorescent acrylic parts light up and glow nicely. And glow in the dark paracord sewing thread, and even the rubbery kid's necklace stringy stuff. They all look really cool. And now I'm totally ready for Halloween and my next neighborhood rave. I've got several more of these flashlights, and I think I'll do an IR version, you know, make a night scope for my cell phone, and maybe embed a microcontroller in another for strobe or multicolor effects. There's plenty of room in these cases, and they're easy to hack, so I'm only limited by my imagination. Get more details about this project and others on my blog or my Facebook page. See the links in the description below. And hit the YouTube subscribe button to get all the latest projects. Thanks for watching, and go make something fun.